So in our text this morning, we're met with two parables. One is titled, The Parable of the Lost Sheep. At least that's how it reads in my Bible. The other, The Parable of the Lost Coin. Now these titles aren't original to the author of Luke. They've come about over time. With editing and translators, they've added these titles to help us make sense of these texts. And generally, these titles are helpful. They help frame the verses to come. This morning, that's not exactly the case. Each of these titles, at least in the NRSV, they draw our attention to what is momentarily lost. A lost sheep. A lost coin. But if we stop there, we miss the whole story. As it turns out, there's more to these parables than the losing. Let me set the scene for you. Jesus is sitting with these tax collectors and sinners. Tax collectors in Jesus' day weren't looked upon with a lot of respect. They were known to be shrewd dealers. Tax collectors bid on the right to collect taxes in a certain area. And if they won that bid, they would go out and collect. They'd pay what Rome demanded and they would make their living on the spread between what they could collect and what Rome required. It was a franchise model of sorts. And so these tax collectors lived in these communities where they collected. And they weren't highly regarded. And that's the kind of person that's sitting this morning with Jesus. Tax collectors and sinners are coming near. They're listening to Jesus. And whatever he's saying, they're listening, drawing near. Jesus not only welcomes them, he eats with them. Now, the Pharisees and the scribes, these are the religious professionals of the day. They're watching this scene unfold. They're near too. And they're grumbling. They're a little miffed by what they see. Jesus is eating with this crowd. It's this grumbling, which apparently is loud enough for Jesus to overhear, that triggers the teachable moment. It's the grumbling that triggers the parables that we read in today's gospel. One of these stories is titled The Parable of the Lost Sheep, but it's not so much a story about what is lost. More accurately, this story is a story about a good shepherd who searches tirelessly. A second, seemingly identical story at least in structure, follows this one. And that heading is the parable of the lost coin. Though again, it's not so much a story about a coin or even the fact that it's lost. Instead, this is a story about a woman and her search. She searches diligently. She sweeps the floor. She probably moves some furniture. She lights a lamp in a world where lamp oil is money. It's costly. In both parables, there's a search. In both stories, there's a find. In both cases, that finding isn't a question of if, but when. And when what is lost is eventually found, there's a party. There's a celebration. Neither the shepherd nor the woman seem too concerned about the additional cost of a party. We're met with these two stories this morning. But don't let the titles fool you. They aren't stories about the losing. We're met with two images of God. One masculine, one feminine. Two searches, two finds. In the foolishness of God, God searches until God finds, not if, but when. 
great cost, God searches out the one who has no one. The one on the fringes. The one without a voice. The one in the shadows. And when that one is found, heaven sings. These aren't stories about losing at all. They have more to say about God's finding, God's persistent searching, heaven's rejoicing. All is set right in each of these parables. Nothing stays lost. All is set right. As Jesus eats with these tax collectors, sinners and grumblers, It's been a hard week for Minna and I. Very little has, has seemed set right in our lives. Hesitated to share this story. I'm going to share it anyway. Uh, a friend of ours died on Sunday night. Uh, he took his own life on the grounds of the VA hospital in Des Moines. Um, they had tried to help him there. Steve was a, uh, a Vietnam vet. But more than that, he was our friend. Uh, He was the building supervisor at Capitol Hill Lutheran Church, where where my wife, Minna, is the pastor. He was a wonderful person. Uh, Generous and kind, full of compassion, he would walk Minna home uh, at nights when she lived downtown. He would walk her from the church to her apartment. Um, Always there, always willing to serve. We didn't know Steve was hurting. At different points in this week, you might say that men and I felt a little lost. We found ourselves a little bit lost. In our grief, in the shock, probably a little despair. It has been a blessing a real blessing to turn to these verses and to see them in a little different light, to see them beyond their titles. It has been a blessing to read again about the persistence of God, the persistence of God's love in the world for Jesus Christ, through Jesus Christ. I've read this week these few verses, there's just 10 of them, about a love that doesn't give up, A love that doesn't leave us lost. It has been a blessing this week to read about this one who seeks us out. Pursuing foolishly, searching recklessly, particularly among the shadows. The God we worship is the one who sits in mixed company. That God is a God of persistent love, persistent searching and finding. That God goes to great lengths to find us anew, to break into and break through those lost places in your life and mine. The spirit of that living God comes to us time and again in a word of hope, in a voice of consolation, in Christian community, in in these stories. God shines a word of grace into the shadows. That God makes a way in the wilderness of human suffering. It has always been so. Those stories are there. I don't know if this word hits home for you. It's not exactly... The sermon I imagine myself preaching on a rally Sunday. But I believe, with all, with all of my being, I believe that the God we worship is the God of the found and the soon to be found. And God's finding isn't a question of if, but when. These stories don't end with all that is lost. They don't end in the wilderness or the shadows. These stories end in celebration. 
they end on a note of finding. These are the stories of Christ. Your stories and mine are Steve's stories too. You are loved and known. You are loved and sought out, never abandoned. Christ sits with you. Christ sits with us all. Amen.